Hey, uh, my name is Manu, and today I want to introduce you to my newest project, Humble Stature. And so Humble Stature is an alternative Buddhist community. And um, the reason why it's alternative is because basically, even though I've done a number of um, things within the Buddhist tradition, I was a Buddhist monk for 15 months. I spent a year at a Essen Goenk of Vipassana Center doing retreats and serving back to back as well as a number of, you know, studying different teachers and exploring um, different Buddhist teachers here in L.A. Um, but on top of that, I was also born in a Hindu ashram. I've studied, um, you know, uh, Eastern Orthodoxy, as well as, you know, different traditions within the Hindu system. Um, theosophy was other influence of mine. I've studied a number of secular teachers. And for this reason, I found that most people that I talked to were also a mix of a number of different traditions, that a lot of the more guru dham or this idea of having some sort of higher teacher who then bestows all of his knowledge upon you um, and is just this one person who has authority doesn't really fit with the American mindset, in my view. And a lot of the Buddhist communities, as much as I love them, tend to cater more towards whatever their cultural group is. Um, you have the Sri Lankan Sangha or the... Um, you know, Myanmar, Sangha, um, the Thai Sangha, and they tend to all have all these cultural kind of things involved with it. And I've always felt like there should be something kind of, you know, a Buddhist Sangha that I guess is uniquely American as well. And I think something that makes America great is the fact of having all these different um, types of people, different types of beliefs, and kind of trying to incorporate that into something greater. Which is why, besides just being Buddhist, uh, there's a very strong um, philosophical sort of understanding around um, transcendentalism, as well as perennial philosophy. And for those of you that don't maybe know what that means, transcendentalism was created by Ralph Waldo Emerson, who basically was, I believe, a Christian preacher who graduated from Harvard. And he basically gave up his practice because he no longer wanted to teach in the traditional way, even though he still considered himself a Christian, but wanted to incorporate a lot of the Eastern teachings that were being discovered. I think this was like the early 1900s. And so for that reason, he started studying a lot of the Hindu scriptures, like the Bhagavad Gita and a lot of Buddhist influences, and um, started to kind of incorporate into something new, as well as really incorporating a direct relationship with nature. And nature as a teacher was something that I always really liked. And um, so you have that on one hand, and then you also have uh, perennial philosophy, which basically says there's a universal esoteric basis to life that spans all traditions, and that there's certain traditions that have gotten that more accurately or less accurately, but um, that you can, through a comparative religion approach, kind of discover what that is for yourself. And that's what perennial philosophers um, attempted to do and have attempted and have done to some degree. And so... Um, I really find that a combination of kind of those maybe three core ideas is what I want to base my community around. And um, I'm going to make videos about that and start doing writings as well. And I'm really happy just to kind of share all this. I've been doing uh, meditations now for about a month in um, the Tabawa Center in Baldwin Park. And um, I also now have a YouTube channel. I've been just putting up the guided meditations because I've been live streaming them. But I'm also going to start putting up videos about different topics with just myself talking to a camera and kind of different ideas. And, you know, really look forward to hear back what people have to say about all that. And um, hopefully I can kind of grow this thing into a larger community. Um, the other really big thing is I'm a big believer in pursuing enlightenment. I think that we're not here to just make money or have a family or whatever it is, but to really that a human being is a spiritual being. And that the ultimate kind of, you could say, goal for any human being is to try to strive for, for um, enlightenment or you could say the ultimate purification of the mind which allows you to reach higher states of consciousness and um, you know I've, I'm one of the few people I think I've met where you're really kind of maybe more open about this and really I feel it's like the really only thing in my life and I you know this is part of the reason why I became a monk in the first place is because of how strongly I feel about this but I don't really believe the monastic lifestyle is the right fit for me. So I want to figure out how do I live almost a monastic lifestyle as a lay person? How do I, you know, while being in the world, how do I live 
in such a way that I can really reach the same states that I've um, read about in these books about these enlightened beings reaching. And um, it's really a whole lifestyle change and it's difficult. And so for other people that are struggling with the same difficulty, I just wanted to, um, you know, build something that uh, where we can communicate. And um, I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing more. So I just would like to say uh, thank you to everyone that supported me. Please subscribe to my new YouTube channel and check out the website. And um, you all be happy, peaceful, and liberated. Thank you.